Thank you so very much for uh, showing up today. I think uh, the, the, it's a lot of uh, to take in on the first day. There's a lot of great sessions. Um, and uh, there's some sessions that I wanted to go personally, but hey, you know, I'm here for you. So um, my name is Victor Gamov. I work as a developer advocate at a company called Kong. Uh, we call it um, cloud connectivity company. We do all things around how you run your applications and how to support you as uh, developers, engineers, operators, uh, system administrators, and how to provide the tools so you can run your applications more reliably uh, in the cloud and everywhere. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a very uh, interesting topic for me and hope for everyone here. So how many of we have uh, the users of Kubernetes and uh, who's running their apps today in Kubernetes? Okay, so we have a what, what the rest of the people? Are they still researching and they still not fully sold on Kubernetes? Or uh, what's, the, what's, the, uh, what's the feel of the room? Because today is going to be like a lot of uh, Kubernetes stuff and hopefully um, I'm not going to do any like big one-on-ones uh, in terms of like uh, how the things work internally. So I expect you folks to understand how, what's the port, what's the deployment, what's the service, how to get access to the service from within Kubernetes. We good on this one, or I need to do like a quick um, detour and do kind of like a uh, Kubernetes one one type of thing. All right, cool. So we'll we'll see we'll we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, uh, we have a plenty of time today. I have a ton of material, but I don't want you to hesitate to interrupt me and ask any questions if you have any. Um, like it would be more for me, it would be more useful that you will get a lot of information from this session rather than me going through my material. So um, I start with very brief set of the uh, stage, like why um, I'm going to talk about ingress and uh, what kind of uh, limitation ingress has. Uh, I'm going to talk today about um, how to expose ingress services, which is kind of like a bread and butter of the any ingress. And it's kind of like a, just a conversation starter. I'm going to talk about some deploying some other type of services, including gRPC, uh, which is also L7 type of protocol, but it's slightly different because it supports streaming and uh, it's not like a request response type of thing. And as a bonus, I also will have an uh, idea how you can expose non-HTTP service from inside world. Like there's plenty of workloads um, that uh, you can run in Kubernetes, including TCP-based workloads. If you need to interact with databases, usually it's a TCP. Or you need to interact with something like streaming service, VPN service, um, how you can uh, deploy this type of service and expose it to outside world using um, Kong Ingress controller. And uh, that goes into advanced features. Okay, so um, Kubernetes native apps. Okay, don't hesitate to take pictures of the slides. My uh, Twitter handle always uh, down below. If you have any questions after the session, uh, if you wanna get them answered as well, like tweet me, DM me, and uh, I will be there answering all the questions. Okay, so um, inside the Kubernetes cluster, we run our applications inside um, uh, with some of the nodes that can see this Kubernetes cluster, and we deploy our applications inside the pods. Pod is the minimum unit of deployment of um, any applications inside the Kubernetes. So in this particular example that I have here, I have a deployment that has a replica account three, so I deployed, uh, like over provisioned my application in case of I need to provide some sort of resiliency in case of like increasing load, um, and I put a load balancer service in front of this application to provide external access. Because with the, when you're running these uh, applications inside the Kubernetes, there's no way how we can get um, to this application from outside world without providing this load balancer servers. Um, you have access to your application through um, um, uh, cluster IP uh, and uh, node port services like inside Kubernetes cluster. Uh, but with the node port, you can provide external access, but you need to also uh, get the range of some uh, not very convenient uh, port numbers and, and so far and so on. Uh, things getting much more interesting uh, when you start deploying some more other services, right? We start deploying with the order services, with, we need to bring the billing services, we need to bring some sort of like analytic services and so far and so on. And uh, it would be kind of natural, okay, so let's put the load balancer in front of every service. Uh, but it turns out to, you know, get the external IP address for each uh, load balancer, it's uh, costly, and uh, uh, if we steal an IP uh, version 4, it's, it's also limited. So 
the smart people in the Kubernetes community, they come up with this idea of uh, ingress object. So ingress object will put some sort of proxy and based on different rules, it will route the traffic. If we will want to get to a particular service, there will be a different set of rules in order to bring this traffic in. So the way how it works, uh, many things we do in Kubernetes, we do it through the YAML, and this is the typical ingress that you have uh, with, your, uh, with your application. Say we have this uh, billing service that we need to hit um, and uh, to get access to uh, those bills, and um, uh, we need to use this uh, the path um, wait a second, yep, um, with, the, uh, with the bills, so we can, um, when we go to our kong proxy.me slash bills, uh, the ingress that will interpret this resource, will route this traffic to our particular service. Um, and this works for pretty much any implementation. It's regardless if you're using um, like Nginx, which is a standard ingress uh, controller that uh, basically available for everyone, or there are some plenty other vendors that provide you with the in ingress controller. So Kong, is, uh, Kong provides this uh, open source uh, ingress controller that can do a lot of things that is built in, but uh, we're gonna talk about what you can do more, again, without you know, paying a dime. So um, historically, people and operations, uh, people in um, maybe even in uh, in development, they will try to put some of the uh, responsibilities to your proxy server. So most of the time, proxy server was as a load balancer. You're running multiple instances of your application, and the proxy will check if um, uh, if it send the traffic to one of the uh, nodes that's uh, live and healthy. Uh, or if the node is not healthy, we will not send the traffic there. Um, also, a very typical use case of many uh, proxy servers and load balancers to do SSL termination. So instead of kind of configuring um, uh, the certificates and providing the certificate management capabilities to applications, they put this into infrastructure. And uh, our certificate uh, rotations and the updating of these things will be handled by a load balancer. And uh, uh, going into the future and uh, going into uh, present and the future, um, many people start doing uh, devops -y things on top of the load balancer, like providing the canary deployments, uh, providing the, tra uh, the, the throttling and the traffic shaping, all these kind of interesting things that can be done uh, with the traffic, but not putting this to, um, to your application. So uh, from perspective of um, components and how they're running inside the Kubernetes, it looks uh, pretty much like, like this. A Kubernetes is a API server. Inside this API server, there will be special component that will be responsible for understanding this particular type of API, in this case, ingress, with specific class. We're gonna be, I will be showing you how you can distinguish which ingress controller will be handling this particular ingress, and that's uh, also based on um, standard specification. So, Many people asking me, like Victor, but like why I need to use the proxy server, why I need to use gateways, like they, I will be using them interchangeably ex except uh, times when I want to talk about some specifics. For example, um, uh, we'll be talking about API gateways and all this kind of stuff. So um, the proxy load balancer API gateway, it's a similar technology. It's an extra hub that sits inside your, uh, outside of your application. It provides you some sort of um, uh, capabilities. So in this particular case, this is my vanilla application. This is a nice and slick uh, the application that does the thing. So in this case, maybe doing uh, something with the, uh, the managing the enterprise D uh, the spaceship uh, and uh, doing some, some of their things. However, um, when I deploy this application to uh, somewhere in, uh, in the Kubernetes cluster, uh, there's always the people will come for me and asking these type of questions. Um, the day two responsibilities, developers don't really care. You know, they need to deliver code, they need to make sure that the test coverage is over the roof, they have uh, some cool frameworks running inside, but like day two responsibilities around, you know, providing the certificate rotation, providing log rotation, providing some of the, uh, the caching capabilities, metrics collection, who will do that? Like who, <laughs> the neat part, as a developer, I don't care. I don't need to do this, and I don't want to do this. So what I want to have is to have the certain uh, augmentation to my application that will increase my functionality for my application without me implementing any of this code. So this is gonna be stuff that um, I will be focusing uh, today, and I will be showing how we can pump this, like a standard ingress that just does routing by enabling certain functionalities without changing my code of my application. 
So in this particular case, this proxy server will be solving all these responsibilities for me, and uh, I will be using Quang, which is uh, the, one of the most popular API gateways. Um, what is the API gateway? I already said, it's the set of um, application, it's some sort of application that sits between your client and your application and does some cool things with your traffic. Um, and traffic can be not only HTTP, and can be um, um, also like L7 type of traffic. Um, I will be showing you today some of the things how Quonk Ingress Controller will extending some of the Kubernetes capabilities and uh, by providing custom resource definitions for uh, interacting with, uh, with Quonk specifically, but without you know, changing um, the standard specification of uh, Ingress. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the plugins and how to enable these plugins by creating these custom resource definitions. Um, something like this, like there's a plugin that will provide in key off that I will be using in my demo right now. So only thing that I need to specify a uh, name, uh, and uh, this is how I will be enable this in my ingress. So annotations on top of this resource, on top of this ingress resource, provide the capabilities for me to um, extend, uh, providing some, some additional features. If you want to use, um, if you want to automatically provision, let's encrypt uh, certificates, use annotation, that cert manager will be listening and will do the thing. Um, if you want to provide, say, um, automatic configuration of your DNS server based on your ingress, you can use annotation for a tool like uh, external DNS, and external DNS will, you know, they'll read your IP address and map this IP address to DNS name for you automatically. So, and we're following the same, the same route. So, those annotations are not affecting other components. They only be uh, understood by specific ingress controller. So, uh, you're still dealing with the standard ingress and annotations, they will be ignored if they, you know, if your ingress controller doesn't know what to do with it. Okay, and uh, we can do multiple, multiple annotations here. Um, I think it's time to, uh, to run through some code. Um, let's do this presentation mode. Okay. I'm gonna show you today a couple applications. So I am, um, I like movies. I like movies and I like to talking about movies. I like using quotes from the movies. You already know that I'm a huge uh, fan of the Star Trek. Anyone Star Trek? Like uh, how many of you appreciate the uh, space, uh, Space Federation T-shirt from Dev Nexus. No, anyone? How many of you are watching the Picard right now? Picard. No, come on. It's a, it's a great show. I think this a, they did a pretty good stuff here. So I will be using the movie quotes uh, as example of my application. Pretty simple REST API. You're hitting a certain endpoint, and this endpoint will give you some funny quote, or maybe not funny. So it's a, I'm not the one to tell. And um, this uh, application, for example, um, I will show you, I have a back to future uh, quotes. If I will hit this, let me do a font a little bit bigger so we will see it. When I send this request, I should get some of the responses if my Wi-Fi working. Yeah, so some of the response from uh, my uh, back to, uh, back to uh, future quote service. Um, and uh, to understand where this is coming from, let's drill this down. So first of all, um, that's some of the set of headers that was set by this like ingress controller. So I see that my response was served via Kong 2.7.1. So when I hit this request uh, from my uh, uh, tool, um, this request was uh, received by ingress controller, and after that, routes it to my pod that runs uh, inside my Kubernetes namespace. If I go here, let's, let's make it, uh, usually a uh, live demo on conference Wi-Fi. Um, it's interesting thing to do. Let's see, maybe I should switch to uh, Dev and Access Wi-Fi. Uh, maybe it would be a little bit, uh, a little bit faster. Yeah, by the way, you can also follow along uh, if you have, uh, you know, it's basically the public, uh, public IP address. You can also like hit this, uh, uh, the DNS name. So you can hit this from any, um, any client that you want. So uh, let's go to my uh, default namespace. All my applications are deployed into here. So I have a few deployments. So we're gonna start with Back to Future. After that, we'll go into um, Chuck Norris facts about Chuck Norris. We will go for some of the Dune 
uh, quotes uh, with uh, gRPC, and after that, we end up with, uh, with some of the special stuff from Rick and Morty today. So, um, for Back to Future, my service uh, is just like simple pod that runs a Spring Boot application. Um, and uh, Spring Boot um, up and running, so all good. And uh, when I hit this application uh, with, the, uh, with the Insomnia client, I'll get, um, every time I'll get the random code. Now it will reconnect, hopefully, um, because I changed the Wi-Fi and it still not, uh, didn't pick up, so let me restart this. Do -do -do. Yeah, so, so first thing, I want to risk not, uh, limit access to this API. Like everyone can just like uh, jump in and start hitting this API, but um, I want to make some business out of it. So I want to provide a different layers of um, access to this API. So if it's free API, you will get uh, some like a free amount of calls that you can do to this API. If it's gonna be something that uh, you have a, like a premium uh, customer will swipe the credit card, I will provide you different um, different way how we can do this. And uh, the first example that I will be doing here is to uh, enable, um, yep, uh, we are here, for service. Um, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna use um, so-called free tier plugin. So this plugin, what this plugin will do? So this plugin will be using a rate limiting functionality. So if I go to place like, and I'll just do rate limiting, and it will give me a um, description of this plugin. So essentially, uh, it will be a limit a number of requests per particular IP, so, um, or particular consumer. We're gonna talk about consumer in a few, uh, few more things. But like if I want to configure this in Kubernetes, there's a tab to do this, and I can copy paste this uh, for, uh, for, my, for my application. So here, I will just go ahead and uh, apply to my uh, Kubernetes cluster. Um, and if I will go and just do, um, that's the um, custom resource. Yes? We'll talk about this. Yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk, we'll talk about this then. So now um, I enable this plugin, but like how I can tell this uh, ingress to start using this one. So with, I already mentioned this to you, we're gonna be doing this with annotations. So if I go to my uh, back to future ingress, the way how it looks like, um, it is hitting my uh, back to future service uh, and uh, it uses back to future kong.proxy.me uh, as my DNS name. As you can see, there's plenty of other annotations. For example, here there's annotation for external DNS because I want to create a, um, uh, Automatically, so because like I'm doing these demos and spin up the cluster in and out, so I don't want to go and every time change my DNS. So the external DNS annotation will do the thing for me. So same thing I want to do for my uh, for my ingress. So I'm gonna go ahead here, apply this my Kubernetes cluster, and um, when I hit this request, for example, I will just go ahead say repeat on interval, say every every second. So instead of me spamming the button, um, I will make the robots to, uh, to do my thing. So it sends the request, and all of a sudden I start getting um, the uh, API rate limiting. So let's explore what is going on here. So I do have um, this plugin enabled. As you can see, like, uh, the, when I enable this, it just like, uh, it's happened instantaneously. Uh, no redeployment, no stuff, so just like enable this, like you have a, big moment uh, of launch of your application and everyone starts uh, hitting your application and uh, uh, application starts suffering, enabling rate limiting, and uh, people will be suffering, <laughs> not application. Um, and um, the uh, Kong also puts the, um, some of the additional information for, for the service to, uh, to push back. So for example, I know in one particular uh, moment, if I went here in my configuration for this plugin. I said like a, for five requests per minute is allowed on my free tier. If yeah, I'm not providing any information uh, with my request, 
to allow me to, so I will be identified as a you know, premium user. Um, only five requests. With this, uh, I can say how many requests I have left, how much time is left here, and um, so the, it's, it's kind of like a sliding window, like uh, the, the minute is counting. It's not like sliding window, it's like you have a five request and after that the minute needs to expire. Um, so that's the, that's the, that's the simplest, uh, simplest use case. Now, how we can uh, start getting some of the premium stuff? So I do have this, uh, the paid tier, um, uh, the plugin that allows me to um, that allows me to somehow uh, rem uh, distinguish between free users and uh, premium users. So in this particular case, I have a plugin that uh, has a, a pay tier name. It's also using same type of rate limiting. However, here I'm limiting not by IP address but the consumer. And the consumer here is a special type of object that um, um, I can control. I cannot control users. Uh, when uh, users come into my system, but I can control how um, these users can be represented for my application. So that's why in Kong we have this concept of consumer that essentially will be consuming your like upstream API. Um, in this particular case, uh, this consumer will be uh, identified by a user uh, one API key. And uh, there's another plugin that will be work together with my rate limiting plugin. So they will be working together and configuring together under one, um, one ingress. So I'm going ahead here, also applying this. So Back to Future is a great piece of the, uh, uh, the American movies. However, um, I think, I feel that it's not good uh, to just like a get the money for, for, from the people from consuming this API, I will ask money for something different, from facts about Chuck Norris. I think it's more important and it's kind of like a, I own the something here in terms of like a getting like a big buck here. So uh, I will uh, enable these plugins under my uh, Chuck Norris ingress. And uh, I will just uh, remove the platinum tier because we're gonna return to this one. Um, next thing is that uh, it will be dealing with this uh, with this key that I specified in my um, in my pay tier plugin. So this particular key auth. So how I can do this? In in this case, I'm running this inside the Kubernetes. I will create a um, a special type of uh, this key. So in this case, you know, when I set a uh, the the um, API key with uh, word please and even um, some praying uh, emoji. So I will be able to get um, in. So let me create this secret a little quick for, for this application. So if I go here, cool service, CD, I'll go to Chuck, um, no, it's actually plugins, plugins, and I'll just do create Chuck secret. So it will just create two secrets uh, for, uh, for, for this demo. And now when I will apply this in um, uh, this ingress, and I will try to hit information about Chuck Norris, I'm getting 401. Why is that? Because I didn't provide a, a, a API key. So in this case, I need to go ahead here and provide a header, say, API key, and I'll just do, please. And uh, getting a response back. So let's take a look at what we have here. So first of all, now we have a rate limiting 10, meaning that we have, um, like, the, the system will identify that as a premium user, so we now have a 10, um, 10 stuff, uh, 10, 10 requests. We have successfully sold this application to some other people and there's some big spenders came in and saying, hey, we don't like this like a 10 requests per minute spent. We want to have like a, some extra layer of uh, care. So in this case, I will go ahead and create a platinum tier uh, for, for this type of uh, users. And uh, the plugin would look like this. With my platinum tier, I creating another consumer that will identify this platinum person um, and uh, 100 requests per minute. Also, we're going to write limiting. We're going to be using different API key for this. So in this case, we're going to be using um, roundhouse kick. 
that's pretty much a good API key for this type of use case. So um, I'm go ahead and apply this plugin for Platinum tier. And uh, we're good to go. So with my ingress, I'll just uh, apply in this one as well. And uh, when I hit this endpoint, nothing happened, right? Because we still have ability to get this kind of like a, a good a golden tier. But if I will just do uh, duplicate and say it root platinum, so I will provide different header here. I will providing the uh, um, with roundhouse kick. I still have a Chuck Norris quote, and now I have hundreds of requests per minute for this platinum tier. So based on the different uh, like uh, SLA that I'm providing to my customers, I have a different uh, different access now. So. That's the HTTP part. So you can do all these kind of things, and they work together in conjunction with other components. Please. Yeah. Yes, I don't have answered this immediately, but the good thing that I have a people uh, with me today who knows this exact answer. But we can, talk, we can talk about this later because it will require me to ask some of the questions and I don't want to uh, take this time. So, but I would love to talk about this, please. Like, who? Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. Like, uh, explain timeout, like what? Uh, Uh huh. Yeah. I think uh, I need to also get a little bit more details about this, but like uh, in my opinion, it would be better to either cache response so you will get the response faster, so you will your user will not suffer, or you know explicitly tell them you know push back like we're gonna do this. But like I would love to learn more about the, your use case, like what what exactly you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Okay, so um, now we're going into the world of, uh, of the streaming, right? So um, we were get a great success on, um, uh, on providing the REST APIs to our cu customers. Now uh, many customers are saying, hey, we want to build something that will allow us to call your system not in the style of like a request response, but more in the RPC style. So uh, gRPC becomes very popular, like can you provide API uh, for gRPC because we have uh, some of the, for example, uh, the mobile clients th that can, like native mobile clients that can understand gRPC. Like, uh, um, and it's, it's a pretty good protocol for um, applications to communicate to each other instead of like going through the route. Um, and um, and uh, we decided, okay, so we will provide our Dune um, quote service as a gRPC service. So how we can do that? So let's take a look on this, um, where's my Dune? Dune. This is how my uh, ingress look like. Ingress looks exactly the same, except a few things that we need to point out in this ingress. There's a notation that need to tell Kong that we actually not going on HTTP 101 anymore. We're going on uh, HTTP 2 because it's a gRPC call. So instead of annotation, we're saying that all requests that go into this particular host will be served uh, as a uh, gRPC. Now, uh, also we need to tell uh, this ingress because there's no way in this particular uh, situation we can say uh, uh, here, for example, except the port, we cannot uh, configure anything saying, can we say, say it's a type. So when I configuring the service, I, I, I don't think I have it like type. There's no, there's no such thing as type. There's only, only the name of the service and the port. So we need to also tell the clock because it will be proxying a totally different protocol where it can be streaming. So in this case, it needs to hold the connection. So in this case, if we go to the service definition, inside the service definition, I also need to specify that this service will be serving these responses through G gRPC. In this particular case, it's a gRPCS. So in this case, more our server 
will be exposed through uh, gRPC S, and uh, the traffic also will go through uh, gRPC S. So my application is deployed into gRPC, so I also will be using Insomnia. So by the way, yeah, I, I didn't say, like, I'm using Insomnia. It's uh, like um, um, the, the, the tool for testing APIs. Uh, it supports uh, HTTP, it supports gRPC, it supports GraphQL, so all this, um, how we call it, full enchilada. Um, so with this, I need to specify with gRPC, I need to specify the proto that will be defining my, uh, my application, and my proto looks uh, something like um, this. Uh, shift in. Where's my proto file? I'll just locate this uh, manually. Main proto. I have a two, two services. One will be operating similar, like a request response service, and another one will be streaming uh, all the quotes uh, back to my client. Um, and when I hit this, when I go here and I just hit, and it should get me a quote from the Dune now. So with, uh, with this, uh, my traffic also served through uh, gRPC. I can use any gRPC client uh, for that matter. For example, there is a uh, gRPC, uh, gRPC curl uh, that is similar to curl and also will be working. And uh, uh, the, the response come here. And now if we can see here, the response is also coming from, from Kong if we were hitting this through the standard tools. Um, and, uh, as you can see here, content type at gRPC works great. Now, um, if I want to do something with uh, streaming, um, there's a definition for, for my service that can provide me a stream. So in this case, return stream of quote messages. So when I click here, and there's a bunch of responses came from here. Behold, as a wild ass in a desert go in forth in my work. Like, I said the S from the stage, but like I was quoting the uh, very notable book. Um, yeah, so the, in this case, like the same ingress, same definition was used to uh, expose the absolutely different type of service. And again, we also serving this, um, I didn't mention this before, but uh, in, um, if I'm doing this with, uh, like say, back to future, uh, and if I show you timeline, um, it also um, takes the benefit of integrating with the cert manager, which is also a CNCF uh, project that allows me to provision my uh, HTTPS certificates through Let's Encrypt. So only thing that I need to do here in, uh, in my configuration, and Quang um, uh, works very nicely with, um, um, so the way how the cert manager works, it will be it operate, uh, integrate, um, interacting with the Let's Encrypt uh, REST API in order to get this HTTPS, but in order to get uh, HTTPS the certificate, the server that requesting needs to solve, uh, uh, solve a, um, how, how do you call it? Um, like challenge, exactly. And uh, in this case, like Quonk will provide ingress for uh, the, this kind of pod that will be, would be requested by uh, let's encrypt uh, a, um, a callback. So it's kind of like a meta. We will be using uh, this uh, HTTPS certificate for ingress that will be served with Kong, but this HTTPS certificate will be provided by uh, ingress, the, by, the, by the challenge solver that will also will be served through the Kong ingress. Only thing that I need to specify here is, uh, where is it? I'm sorry. Is it, where is it, where is it, the ingress? I don't have it here, I lied. I, it's, it, it was a part of a different demo, but um, uh, it works in, uh, let me show you, works in stuff like, uh, there was, um, where is it? In a different one. Like, I will, yeah, I forgot, I forgot, uh, I forgot where my demo. Now, we talk about the arrest. We talk about gRPC. So let's talk about something um, totally different. Okay. We have a service that will be consumed not from the customers directly, but will be consumed some small devices, and the small devices don't understand any fancy protocols like HTTP. They don't understand any fancy protocol like gRPC. But they understand um, UDP. Like, 
everyone understand the UDP, uh, and uh, we need to send some of the important information for this type of clients. So in this particular case, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna provide them uh, uh, the quote service for Rick and Morty. So how we can do this with the with the same set of tools? So standard ingress is not suitable for dealing with this. So in this case, we need to uh, we need to go a little bit on some some of the custom stuff. And uh, for this, we have another custom resource. We have a, a UDP ingress for dealing with UDP type of workloads, and we have a TCP um, a TCP ingress for TCP type of workload. Um, and uh, essentially, this is what we do with the. Um, uh, we also specify in another service that for Kubernetes matter, it really Kubernetes doesn't care. Um, and uh, this UDP service will be uh, served on the particular port. And I need to specify the, the, the protocol here in, uh, to be explicit with, uh, with Kubernetes. Now, we also need to tell Quong that um, we cannot uh, like a multiplex the same, we use to use like same IP and the same port to serve HTTP and UDP traffic. So that's why uh, if I will just do get services, I need to start two load balance services. First one, I will be using only for HTTP based traffic. So this is what um, uh, my Kong proxy um, load balancer uh, would look like. And there would be another uh, load balancer service that will be serving on a different IP address. And it only will be serving UDP type of workload, right? So with this, uh, we're going into, into place uh, with, uh, if you have a, your like, UDP, favorite UDP client, uh, the Netcat works just fine with UDP protocol. Uh, and uh, when, I, uh, when I hit this, I'll get the Rick and Morty quotes from, uh, from UDP served through Kubernetes cluster, through um, Kong ingress controller. Um, yeah, me six. So it, um, it, it's um, it also like it works just great, um, and uh, I also um, I also find very interesting while developing this demo that uh, like instead of using some of standard uh, uh, what's called like a datagram sockets in in Java, I can use a project reactor that has a built-in uh, UDP server. Uh, I think it was kind of like a cooler cooler demo to develop rather than just use the, the standard tool. Um, and uh, this is how it looks like. So for example, the, um, uh, the, the previous demos were written with Spring Boot, uh, nothing fancy there, like Spring Boot can, uh, you can write the uh, REST, you can write the uh, gRPC services, but this one is uh, um, using the project reactor and uh, reactor server, and the uh, only thing that I need to implement here is basically handler to, um, to serve this. When the request comes in, I will just send um, a Rick and Morty quote. That's, um, that's with this. Now, uh, last but not least, uh, I have a one th last thing to uh, talk to you about. Any questions, by the way, so far, what I was talking um, uh, with the, um, with non-HTTP services? I see some of the questions that you might think in, but uh, <laughs> not necessarily asking this question. So will the, some of these plugins work on uh, non-HTTP uh, workloads? So here's the thing. In this case, like, in, we need to be like, more specific. Some of the plugins make sense and they can work with uh, non-HTTP workloads. For example, um, advanced rate limiting that is kind of like extension of the rate limiting plugin that we have as a kind of like uh, the paint offering. It actually supports all protocols. It supports TCP, uh, it supports like um, RP, gRPC, HTTP, HTTPS. Uh, rate limiting uh, doesn't support uh, gRPC. Um, and uh, we can learn this by just like going into, again, documentation. Um, but majority of the plugins that people use, um, uh, they are available uh, like as a, as a part of free, uh, free, free offering. Um, there should be something like protocol saying that what kind of protocols they, they support. Uh, let's see. Forgot. Uh, there should be uh, something like which kind of protocols uh, this uh, configuration supports. Um, 
Anyway, uh, with the rate limiting plugin uh, that I showed you uh, right now, it uses like in-memory uh, information about the rate limits, but like a rate is also supported um, in, uh, in uh, open source version. Now, so I showed you that we can do this in Grass. We can do this with some custom UDP in Grass. Right before pandemic, like two years ago, in uh, KubeCon, KubeCon San Diego, like a group of people who were interested in you know, fixing this problem with Ingress, not supporting any other types of workloads. And plus, like Ingress itself, um, it, it's stable, it's a, it's, a, it's a good API, but if you would try to be like more flexible with it, you need to come with either um, something that different vendors provide uh, or be very, you know, you need, to, you need to come up with different tricks how to avoid this. So what uh, they decide, they decide to start working on API that would be maybe potentially in future supersede Ingress, but uh, for now, um, they call it uh, Gateway API for Kubernetes. Um, that's the, uh, that's the, oops, that's the new um, API that uh, CNCF, uh, Special Networking Interest Group, is working right now. And the idea of, uh, with, of this gateway API is to be more explicit about um, how this traffic would be served through uh, certain uh, gateways, or in this particular case, gateway would be actual implementation, similar to ingress controller. Um, but when we're dealing with the uh, ingress and we're providing the ingress controller, um, we only think that we can say here is, uh, let me show, show you yeah, this one, for example, like only thing that I can specify here is ingress class name and rest of it is, is history. So there's no way how you can configure this and you will be relying on your provider who will providing you with like Kubernetes cluster who will installing this uh, software for you. So what they decide to, okay, so we, we will, um, we will introduce a few more new APIs. So there would be, um, come on, a um, few more APIs. Gateway class will allow to define um, the actual um, the entity that will be serving, uh, serving your, your traffic. Um, as a developer, as a kind of like a, um, as a developer, you will get already configured gateway and these gateways can be served um, as managed or unmanaged. When we manage, like when you just creating your HTTP route, this gateway will be provisioned like on the spot. Uh, if it's gonna be like unmanaged, meaning that like someone else will provision this for you and you know that you can rely on this one. And as a developer, you just simply using this HTTP route that is quite more advanced. It has a little bit more um, custom uh, routing. So for example, I'll give you uh, just a quick peek. Uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time on, um, on Gateway API, but uh, since it's related, I want to talk a little bit about this. Where, where are we? So for example, HTTP routes uh, with, um, with the host. So if, when I hit here, this, this URL for example, if I hit this back to future conk blah blah blah, what actually happens underneath the request will comes into this API with host header. So in this case, if I would send this, where's the header? Like a host header, it will do the routing. But see here, I'm hitting this like, a, like a, the, the root of my application. If I hit this without, uh, without this host routing, I will get the standard, the Kong response that there's no route found. But if I send the host, that's a standard host-based routing that built in in uh, Ingress. And uh, we, we still can do this with the, um, um, we still can do this with, uh, where is it? We still can do this with, um, uh, with, gateway, uh, with gateway API. Um, works exactly the same way, we just need to specify host name and based on this host name we will be uh, routed to this particular, um, oh, sorry, host, yeah, uh, wrong one, yeah. Uh, we specify the host name, and this will be routed to a particular thing, yeah. Say again? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 so right now it's, uh, it's alpha. It, it's like a so alpha, 
that it's not even installed in your Kubernetes cluster. You need to install the CRDs manually. But going forward, uh, those CRDs will be installed. Uh, as will be the part of your. You know. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. You're just defining like a two uh, different routes, and order either based on header or based on the route. Uh, you will go to different uh, different routes. I don't have like an example on the spot, but like you can do that with like both with ingress and with both with the gateway. And to, to be frank, it would be much easier to do with gateway API uh, going forward because you can define only a rule for you know version two and the rest of stuff all, always would be kind of like uh, defaulted to, to version one. Um, Host-based, path-based, basically path-based will allow you to define the default path so this is your version one, and after that, with the version two, it will go into the version, different version of your, uh, of your service. Um, if you need to do like a header routing, that's not something that's uh, out of the box available in Ingress, but will be out of the box available in, um, in this uh, gateway API. So um, there's kind of positive ways in, uh, in uh, the vendors providing like a custom implementations, like things like UDP Ingress and uh, TCP Ingress, now this would be translated to the standard uh, UDP route, HTTP, uh, the, the TCP route, gRPC route, or whatever routes. So um, you can use Ingress right now. If it's bare minimum, what you need to do, you know, stick to Ingress. Um, if you need to do some advanced stuff, integrate more closely with your provided um, gateway, you probably will be using either like Clonk Ingress or some other ingresses that are available. Um, from those vendors. And going forward, keep an eye on the Gateway API, which is gonna be like a pretty cool stuff in uh, real, uh, real future. So I show you demo. Like I was doing, I'm doing like a, um, a lot of uh, videos about this, like all these uh, things that I talk to you in kind of, in the setting of the conferences that I can cover only certain things. Um, I have like all detailed uh, demos for things in our YouTube channel, just go there, subscribe. Um, write down in the comments, you know, that's YouTube, yay. Um, and also uh, join uh, our community. We have a community forum, we we'll call it uh, Kong Nation. Um, I'm trying to get back to the uh, live streaming like every Tuesday to do a Kong Builder stream where I'm kind of either would be influenced by some of the questions in the community or something that I will found interesting to tickle around, like a, a play around, but uh, it's, it's a good time to, um, you know, Come in, hang out, uh, get your questions answered. And uh, we're gonna be um, very soon announcing the Kong Summit. If you're doing anything with API, with connectivity, with service meshes, uh, API gateways, uh, we want you to, uh, to speak there if you're interested in this type of jazz. Or if you're interested in this type of jazz but you don't want to speak there, just come see and hang out with, uh, with Kong team and uh, some other uh, cool people in, uh, in the community in San Francisco in September. With this, my name is Victor Gamov, and uh, as always, have a nice day. I didn't uh, mention like very important thing where we can find everything. So as always, we can find everything in where is it? Um, uh, in the GitHub. So there is a repository called Demo Scene because it's a demo that I'm doing on the scene, like on the stage. So. Um, all these demos there, uh, go play around with this. Uh, with some advanced, I will be available for advanced interrogation uh, at the Kong booth, uh, where I have a support of the much uh, smarter people um, than uh, myself. All right, thanks so much. Yes? Uh, what's the difference between Kong Ingress controller and AWS uh, uh, load balancer? So I'm not familiar if, as a, if it's a product that you can install on your, or it's something that Amazon provides you. Are you talking about like Amazon API gateway? Let's talk, let's talk uh, down, down there. We have uh, experts in, in this type of jazz. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, but not Kong specifically. We have uh, this open source tool called uh, Kuma, which is a service mesh implementation that solves exactly your use case. Essentially, um, everything that you're dealing, like every traffic that you deal inside your, your data center or your Kubernetes cluster or whatever, this is a good, uh, um, good use of service mesh. Essentially, what it will work, the way how it will work, your pod will have a sidecar uh, that will be managed by you know, some, some control plane. And uh, this control plane will be providing different rules how this, uh, like, uh, the sidecar will dealing with your traffic. So essentially, um, the, the concept that you call in, it has a, like a two, two parts. First part is to, um, we do have this, um, I think it's, a, it's called like a, a traffic policies. One is a before retry, and second one is about egress. So I was talking about ingress when, we, uh, when we're trying to provide traffic in, but like egress is about how we can send the traffic from our application to somewhere. So it's kind of a combination of these two. So take a look at the Kuma, kuma.io. Yeah, K-U-M-A. Um, it's a, a bear in Japanese, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, it's, a, it's a CNCF uh, service mesh project. We contribute a lot of this, or we built our Kong mesh on top of Kuma. So um, yeah, just you know, try this out. Go to my YouTube channel. You can find some of the demos that I did with uh, service mesh. All right, yeah. Yeah, very good question. So uh, you can have uh, both. You can have like all, uh, you can listen all namespaces or you can limit to particular namespace, you, you know, so you can, it, you can configure. There's a parameter um, called the watch namespaces available um, that allows you to only look in for ingresses only particular uh, namespaces. So um, also again, there's a video about this in the YouTube channel. So I, I brought this into, I showed how I can restrict some of the access to, to UGP ingress only to UGP namespace and stuff like that. So it's, it's actually quite, uh, it's quite easy to do. So we're providing a, we're providing a uh, Helm chart for, uh, to run, uh, to deploy this, uh, this conk ingress. And if I look into, uh, where is it, values YAML. In my uh, values YAML for this, just need to just in, in, and look for a particular namespace. It's uh, the, the model of kind of like, if you're trying to restrict some of the things with the RBAC and things like that, um, will look a little bit cumbersome for ingress, but it look much better with gateway API because you know, all this like gateway object, gateway class object, HTTP route, those like fit into like RBAC model very nicely. So it's one of the reasons why developers start working on this like a gateway API is to provide kind of role based API instead of kind of one size doesn't fit all. So that we have with ingress. All right, cool. Um, like I said, I will be available for any questions either on uh, next to the stage or at the Kong booth. Um, I'm still trying to um, uh, done some of the uh, some of the video stuff there. <laughs> so yeah, thank you uh, for coming.